Welcome to another edition of Talk Your Exposure. This is season two, episode eight. A very, very special one. I'm so excited for this one. Very, very special one. I'm alongside my co-host, Devontae Campbell. What's popping, my guy? Man, I'm good. We got a special one, one close to the heart. So let's get this started. Most definitely. We are alongside a scholar, an athlete, a businessman, Chris Eggy. How you doing, my guy? I'm good. I'm good, man. Appreciate you. Hey, appreciate you taking some time to talk to us today, man. All right, Chris, we like to start out the show every time. Get the blood uh, flowing a little bit. I'm going to hit you with some quick hitters. Guys okay. in the NBA, you know, whether they're rising stars, whether they're solidified guys in the NBA, you got about six seconds to answer each, so we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. All right. First one I'm going to hit you with, Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball. What we got going on with the rookies? Oh, man. You know, LaMelo, LaMelo better. I'll, I'll take LaMelo. LaMelo's right. better? Yeah. I, I think I think Anthony's trying to make a case, even Tyrese, but I don't think they're going to touch him at this point. And right. nice, though. Extremely. He's, he's nice, but I, I, I got to take LaMelo. You see what he did against Phoenix last game. It's crazy. I did see that. Speaking of Phoenix, we got Jason Tatum, Devin Booker. Oh. I got to take, uh, I got to take Tatum. Got to take Tatum. You got to take yeah. Tatum. I'm always, I'm always going to stay with Book. I'm always going to stay okay. with Book. Okay. You can't, you can't argue that one too much. All right. Last one we have for you, Chris. I'm going to throw it back a little bit. All right. We got, okay. we asked this one previously. I'd like to see your logic on it. Steve Nash, Jason Kidd. I got to go with Jason Kidd just because, you know what, and I hate to do that to my Canadian man, but uh, Jason Kidd is a better better on defense. In terms and of, I, in terms and of, I trying to win, you. you know, he's a little bit better on D. So. And I agree with you. Steven? Um, so, we, we, so, Chris, we've been having some banter lately with some of our guests that we've had on, on the show. And uh, one of the questions that seems to come up often, I mean, I'm the one that antagonizes it, so I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> in, in, in a game of York Region versus Brampton or GTA or any other region out there, who wins? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> why, are we asking, why are we asking questions we all know the answer to, man? So what's the answer? Okay. York, York Region. Okay, okay. York Region. <laughs> We like that. Hey, listen, you're, you're definitely going to be one of the guys that we're, we're going to be planning to put on York Region when we get that game going. Post-COVID, okay, post you're definitely going to be one of those guys. Bet, I, bet. I used to see you on Vlad's story a lot. You know, he was he was really talking about you all the time, training you, stuff like that. What's your relationship with Vlad like today? Man, he's like a second, second dad to me, honestly. Uh, you know, growing up, every summer I was in his gym every day, like all day. You know, I help him with, you know, run the camps with the with the younger players and then, then we would work out. So, yeah, we, we we just have like a constant banter going back and forth. You know, like he's always talking smack about LeBron because I'm a big LeBron fan. He's a big Jordan fan. <laughs> we know who the best, we know who the real GOAT is. It's Michael uh, Jordan. Sorry to cut you off, but it's Michael Jordan. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we just, yeah, we just stay chatting, you know. Uh, you know, we don't see each other that often because I'm not around. But whenever I'm in town, I stop by the gym and, you know, try and get some running with him. If you don't mind me asking, where are you calling it from right now? I'm in Brooklyn, New York, right now. Nice, 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 yeah. nice. Chris, and are I, you are you are you a are you a Nets fan? Am I a Nets fan? Yeah, I'm a Raptors fan. But if, if there's a Nets game, you know, I, I live pretty close to the arena, so I'm, I'm, I might check it out. But I'm I'm, I'm a Raps fan for life. I like to hear that. Sure. I like I like to hear that. I like to hear that. I know I know you have a, a big scholastic background, so this this answer or this question to me. I'm very excited to hear your answer on this one. You have a dinner party. You have five right. empty seats. Ooh. Dead or alive, who, who are you, who are you, who are you uh, putting in those seats? Man, um, I would say, okay, Malcolm, Malcolm okay. X, Martin Luther King, Angela Davis. I just think in terms of just their minds and what they've done for the culture. Um, and just getting to hear their different perspectives, particularly in the times we find ourselves in now, mm -hmm. I think that'd be that'd be huge. Um, Muhammad Ali, probably yes. would love to speak with Muhammad Ali. Everything he did, um, and you know, he's a slick talker. I feel like he's be a cool dude to be around, but also like everything he he he's accomplished. And then, oh, the fifth person. I feel like Barack Obama would just have some crazy stories to tell. Okay. 
I feel like okay. I feel like he I feel like just like the I don't know what he can talk about because you know some of his, <laughs> some of his under locks, but I feel like he would just have some crazy stories to tell. I think I need to be at that dinner to be. <laughs> to yeah, be that's gonna be that, crazy. That's that gonna be, be a sh- great dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> In 2018, you spoke you spoke at commencement day. Um, being the first ever Harvard athlete or varsity athlete at Harvard to to be able to do that, what did that moment mean to you? That was a big moment for me in my life. You know, going into it, I was mad nervous. Um, I had to, like, memorize it. So, like, mm-hmm. there's no notes. So I, I spent, like, the whole week just, like, saying the speech to myself over and over again. Um, but it meant a lot to me because I felt like I had a story to tell, you know, um, to have, like, that platform to talk about, you know, Michael Brown, to talk about, like, my family's journey and what it means to, like, you know, to aspire for, like, a better world, but, like, do it together. I thought that that story meant a lot to me. Um, mm-hmm. So to have the platform... I, didn't, I really just didn't want to screw it up. And then, you know, uh, I ended up getting through it without making any big mistakes. And, and you know, it felt at the same time that day, like I'm leaving, the next day I'm leaving campus. So it was like the, the end of college for me too. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot emotionally. And it didn't really hit me kind of how much, what it meant until like a few weeks later when people, my dad was saying that like people in his village back in Nigeria that he hadn't spoken to in decades we're messaging him on, like, we're, we're like, reaching out to him. It's like, yo, you're, I saw your son. And just, like, the reach that it could have and impact it could have was crazy. So, you know, definitely so grateful for that experience. It was a life-changing moment. And I, and I have to agree with you on that one, too, man. I listened to the speech that, that, you, that, you, uh, that you said, and honestly, it touched me, man. It was, it was a very good speech. Um, even, even just to be able to hear a little bit about your, your family and background as well in that aspect, and the, knowing that your family, and you, in particular, I'm glad you touched up on this, your grandfather had a dream yeah. for, you, for your, you know, his, his kids, which passed on to you and your family. What did that mean to you that you were able to fulfill your grandfather's dream? Yeah, I mean, it mean it means a world, and you know, it, I think it's it's interesting you say that because I feel, I feel like you know, it's one of those things where you're constantly fulfilling it, right? Because you know, like I said in the speech, higher, higher, higher. There's just so much more to do. So it's like every day, you know, there, there's more to do. Um, and thinking about it the right way, because you know, it's easy to get caught up in money. It's easy to get caught up in like fame, all that stuff. But I think when I think about like what my grandfather was really about. Like, you know, my mom tells me stories that they always had all the other kids at their, at their, at their house when they were growing up. And, you know, they were just super generous and like loving, right. And taking care, taking care of people. And I think that's what, like, if I can be, you know, have impact and, you know, help people out. I think that's like, if I can continue to do that, I feel like I'll be fulfilling his dream on a continual basis. So it means a lot, but, you know, got more work to do. And I know you mentioned the higher, higher, higher part of it. And one of the things that, that really also resonated with me as well is the fact that um, Mike, Michael, Michael Brown? Brown, Michael Brown, yeah, Michael Brown, yeah. That, that Michael Brown was, was, you know, literally a week before he went to Harvard, a situation happened over there. And you even mentioned yourself in your speech, you said, you know, it, it, it touched you because he was supposed to have that same dream you had. Um, mm-hmm. do you, want, do, you also asked your classmates and you asked everyone at Harvard, um, hopefully you went globally as well, for something specific. Do you mind touching up on that? Yeah, I mean, I just ask people to, to to think about, you know, to think about what it means to have a dream deferred, right? And, and this idea of, you know, I think dreams are like the most important things we have, right? Like it's what, it, what keeps you waking up every day, you know, like whether, you know, when it was when I was young, I had a dream to play in the NBA and like, that's what got me up every day out of bed. And we live in a world where like, certain people are allowed to dream and like to realize their dreams and certain people don't get that chance. Mm-hmm. So yes, like being at Harvard's graduation where everybody's thinking about their next dream and like what they're going to do. And like now the world's giving them like this stamp of approval to go out in the world and do whatever. I thought it was important to, to think about what it means to, for all the people whose dreams are killed, you know, in a world where, you know, being a black man, if you walk with a hoodie, that means someone can shoot you. Right. So like, I just want to ask people to, to kind of, you know, walk with me in arms to kind of think about how we can create a world where, where that doesn't happen no more. 
And I, th and I think the one thing too, with your speech is that it was able to, um, you, you, like I said, you, you made you made one of the, uh, you were made history with the fact that you're one of the first ever varsity athletes to be able to make that speech. I'm not sure yeah. if, if you're one of the first or if the first black man to be able to do that as well, but just that alone, you were able to be a, a voice and an advocate for the, you know, the, the African-American community, the black community, and, and, and especially being at Harvard, typically we, we hear the stereotype of not many black people go to Harvard as well. So to be able to see that on that platform, you know, just that in itself, that I feel like is, is going to change things for black for black kids and give more, give more of an opportunity today. Do you agree with that too? Yeah, no, I think it's important. It's funny. Um, a, a, lot, a few black kids, black, black uh, students have given, you know, speeches at graduation. It's funny because I first realized I wanted to give the speech because I went to, I stayed on campus for graduation the previous year and, and a black student that year, he gave, he gave a speech at graduation. Mm -hmm. I just heard his story. I was like, I, it hit me hard. I was like, wow, like I would like to do that. Mm -hmm. And just like little things like that, like me giving my speech and whatever impact that had would have never happened if not for looking up at that stage and seeing someone give a speech before me. So, you know, hopefully, you know, there's, you know, black kids in, you know, black kids in Toronto, Canada who, who saw that speech and maybe didn't think they could go to Harvard or maybe didn't think they could do this or that. And, you know, they saw me speak and, you know, it changed their perspective and it, and it helped them think about, you know, there's nothing that they can't do. Um, so yeah, and 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 it cut, this kind of brings me to my next point as well. Like you even said yourself that you had a dream for the next generation and to be able to flourish and stuff like that as well. Yeah. 2020, 2020, unfortunately, was one of the most detrimental, disgusting years I've ever been part of in my entire life with the George Floyd incident as just one of them. And I think I feel like that's what took off everything. Um, <clears throat> do you do you feel like your dream now, with, because people are getting more noticed because of that incident, is is starting to be able to come to reality? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the first step in change is like acknowledging there's a problem, right? And I feel like so many, I feel like for so many people, uh, you know, when you even think about, you know, even, you know, before, before George Floyd, you know, I do a lot of work you know, where I reach out to people and, you know, try and say, like, we're trying to fight police brutality and all these different things. And people are like, you know, that's a very political issue. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. And now, you know, it's still a political issue, but the whole, like, so many more people are willing to talk about it. Because yeah. they realize, like, when I, like, even, like, three years ago, if you said Black Lives Matter, people would be like, oh, no, all lives matter, right? And people thought that was cool, right? It's just like, so there's, there's been a progression in, like, people saying, like, people are racist. Like, racism is a thing. These are real problems. So, you know, I think we're very early still. I think there's a lot of activists doing really good work. A lot of people who've been in this fight for a long time and are the reason a lot of this stuff is starting to, you know, hit home. But, you know, I still think, you know, you look outside and you look at what's happening, you know, you turn on Fox News, it's like people, we're not there. You know, yeah. there's still a lot of like, you, you see the election, see how many people voted for Trump. You know, see how many people, you know, the, the kid uh, from Kenosha who, you know, killed people, like all these different things, right? Breonna Taylor's case. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not there, but uh, the hope is, you know, as people open up their eyes, we can continue to, like, strive towards getting there, maybe one day. For sure. I think that's a, I think that's a huge point, you know. <clears throat> you know, in Canada, it's a little bit different. You know, we, we're on the other side of the border. Obviously, you're not right now, but to see that and see the progression, we are making some pivotal moves. But let's transition to, you know, your basketball career, Chris, you know. Okay, okay. Chris, you, you play for Mount Verde, you know, Canada, U19 team, CIA bounce to start off your high school career. Um, you know, out of all three, you know, what did you learn from each coach and how did uh, those teams help you mature as a basketball player? Yeah, so, you know, I guess three teams. So CIA bounce was just, uh, I thought, I, you know, CIA bounce is interesting because I, I feel like I really learned, like, being on a team with, like, everybody was really good and, like, anybody could go to another AAU team and eat. Like, you know, X by himself could, you know, drop how many points a game on another team, right? Wiggs, Still doing it. Tyler, right? X, X, yeah. So all those guys, Isaiah, like, everybody on that team was so nice. But, like, there's dudes like, you know, Troy, who was one of the best players on Vaughn team that, you know, perennial offset contender, you know, come off the bench, right? And just, like, seeing those guys, you know, come together as a team to, like, win all the games that we did, almost win – uh, Peace Jam, I still feel like we got robbed on, you know, a phantom foul call uh, <laughs> that game on that three-pointer. But, uh, 
you know, everybody has kind of sacrificed their egos. And, like, if they could do that, you know, I came into that team. I was the youngest guy on the team. I thought I was, you know, big man, you know, I'm next, I'm next. But really just seeing the older head, older guys on the team kind of put their egos away really, like, put me in a perspective where it's like, if they can do all this, then, you know, that's kind of how I want to be, you know, moving forward. Also, like, playing with Drew, where this is, like, at the peak of his fame, right? Like, you know, Julius Randle game, I remember people were, like, hanging off the balconies trying to watch the game. And, like, you know, he did his thing against Julius. We won that game. And just, like, the way he was so humble throughout. So just, like, humbleness, you know, um, was something I really learned. I think from U19 team, um, I thought I really learned just, like, you know, the idea of stepping up. You know, I know Trey got hurt. Um, and I was, again, the youngest guy on the team. And, you know, I got opportunity to play more minutes because you missed a few games and just being able to step in and step up into a new role um, and, you know, you know, play well. I had a pretty good game against Iran, I remember. Um, that was a great learning experience. And then uh, Mom Bird, man, that was, a, that was a roller coaster. I see I the mean, smile. I, really, I, see, I see the smile. So obviously we're bringing back memories right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of memories. Just competing, right? Like. I feel like most of my life I, I had been like the guy on my team or like one of the guys on the team. And I came to Mount Verde and it's like, yeah, Ben and D'Angelo, I'm like this guy from Canada. I'm supposed to be good, but there was like our whole team went D1, right? Like, our, you know, uh, pretty much our whole team started on like, pretty much like anybody who got minutes on our team started on a D1 program, which was crazy. Um, so it was just super competitive in practice. You have to like, you come to practice, you 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 were gonna get dunked on if you were trying to swat shots. Like people were talking smack every day in practice was just a battle. And it made it made your game so much better. But just that 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 practice of just competing day in, day out, where with like there was no place to hide, right? Like Ben was coming at you full speed and transition, and you either had to get in the way and you know, man up, or he was he was dunking on your head. So it was good. It was, you know, I thought that was kind of what I took from that. No, I, I I remember you. You know, when you're down there, you're always giving me stories about you know every day in practice or the different guys you play with. But let's talk about some of those guys you play. Your yeah. your resume is different from the norm. You know, you played with Ben Simmons, Russell, mm -hmm. Andrew Wiggins, Jamal yeah. Murray, Tyler, yeah. just, just to name a few. But you know, what was their work ethic like, and what and what did they like? What did their job? You know, did sorry. Let me rephrase this. You know. Playing with them, what did your job become easier? You know, how much how, oh. how how much pressure came off your shoulder playing with guys like that? Yeah, I remember we played we played our TV game. It was like my first, like we played on ESPN. It was my first game on ESPN. Mm -hmm. And it's like a home game on Mount Verde. And Daniel was just like, just run and catch. I got you. <laughs> I had That's 20 it. Points. I had 20 points. I, I I don't think I dribbled the whole game, but I was just <laughs> Like all game, just catching, just catching passes. He, he made it like super easy. So playing with those guys, Ben was a great passer, really unselfish. Like the best thing about all those guys, none of them were selfish. They all they all wanted to win. So it was super easy playing with those guys. It made it made like it made the game. You know, going from like you know playing back on my high school in Canada, um, where like every game you know you get like double team, triple team. You know, now I'm playing with Ben. Ben comes in the lane. My man's helping up. I'm like, these, these are some of the easiest points I ever had in my life. So it was a lot of fun. And, it, yeah, they definitely made the game easier for you. Yeah, for sure. I think you got fortunate with, to have two pass-first point guards. I qualify Ben Simmons as a pass-first. I always uh -huh. love, love yeah. his game. Uh, we, you know, we might we might see him with a championship this year, Joel. We don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But, you know, we'll see. Let, let's talk about, you know, from 2013, 2015, you know, you're the captain of Team Canada at the U19 World Championships. You know, yeah. what did that mean to you, you know, to not to not yeah. only able to represent your country, but to gain confidence for, you know, from that organization, the whole entire team? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that, that whole experience meant a lot to me. You know, Coach Roy, I played with Coach Roy since I was – 14, right? Um, uh, with the with the U6, the is it U16? Yeah, you <laughs> with the U is U16, U16. I think it was U16. Yeah, U16 cadet team, and I think uh -huh. I was a year younger, so I was like 15, 14 ish when when I first met Coach Roy. I remember I went to like the open tryout, right? We went to the open trial together. We went to the open trial together. Right. And I'll say I'll say this before you tell the story. I think it was me, you, our Brody, Brody Clark, our age, and you know. Yeah. Me, 
me being able to obviously experience that for myself, being one of the only guys uh, with our age group, you know, Chris did a phenomenal job. You kind of knew, you kind of knew, Stephen, for anybody that's watching that Chris is going to make it. I mm -hmm. think from day one to, what was it, day four, day three, maybe we spent down there. You knew yeah. if they were going to take one guy, that would be Eggy. But I'll let you elaborate. Oh, on man. No, I appreciate that. I didn't know that. But, uh, yeah, I just went. I, you know, I, I was nervous, nervous as hell. Like, a lot of these guys were guys that I had heard of because we didn't really play the older guys as much. So I just had I, – I knew they were good. You know, we didn't really play that level of competition as much in my, in my school league. Um, so I was I was nervous, and then we got there, and I just tried to play hard. Just, that's all I remember, just like play hard, play hard. And some of the best basketball I played was fortunate to get invited to the actual kind of invitational camp, me and Devonte. And then we went to then we went to the real tryouts, and like in between getting the invitation to showing up to the actual camp, you know, I just kind of tried to flip my mindset from like being grateful to be there to like. I got to go kill these dudes. And I spent, I spent all that time, like, I was in probably in some of the best shape of my life by the time we got to camp. I was playing just really well. And, you know, I was fortunate to make the team, which was life-changing for me. Because, you know, up to that point, you know, I started playing a little bit better on St. David's. But even, you know, the year before, definitely on St. David's, I was trash. <laughs> I got cut from the provincial team the previous year. So it was a big, big flip-setting moment. So then taking that experience where Coach Roy, you know, kind of mentored me and guided me throughout my high school career to, you know, being in my senior year of high school, going to college and being captain of the team, you know, meant a lot. Just being with him and then just representing my country meant a lot. You know, I spent years representing the country. So to be in a position of leadership when we're competing against people across the world stage, you know, nothing better than that. I, 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 I just got sorry, Craig, I'm Devontae, but <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. I, I just got to ask you one question because I'm 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 an ish disturber. I'm an ish disturber. Okay. In, in, okay. in a one on one game, who's winning, Chris or Devontae? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so we know the we know the answer to that. We know the answer. To I that hope Devontae. you know. I hope I hope you know the answer. <laughs> we know the answer. Like, listen, <laughs> listen, we can run it anytime you come back over here. I'm gonna have to come back to New York. We can run it. We can run it. <laughs> All right, man. I, I just I hope you know I hope you know the answer because I do. <laughs> listen, I listen. Saying. You know what? I, you know, Chris is gonna compete. Chris is gonna compete. That's one thing about Chris, and you know, just him talking about that last section there. You know, Chris's jumps in basketball are ridiculous. I remember the first day he came to to St. David's. <laughs> we were like, "Who the heck is this, bro?" Like, we have no. Long socks, shoes don't fit. He's <laughs> tall, right? We're all about we're all about six three at the time. You know, Chris right. is about six six at the time. We're like, who's this? You know, it's gonna be another big, right? I want Steven. Mm, give him three months. Give him three months, maybe half a year. There's been a it jump already. Up. There's been a jump already, all the way okay. to you know, he's making Team Ontario, then Team Canada, then he's transferring to Florida. So for for people that don't know Chris or don't know his basketball career, this guy has made extremely big jumps. Like that's a huge jump, bro. Like OBA mm -hmm. national team, Montverde. Like I hope people really understand that. But we're still avoiding but, the question: Who wins in a one-on-one -on -one game? I win. I, I win. win. I win. <laughs> I win. I win. I win. What's it going to be? I'll give you a score. I win. Team. I'll we'll, give you a score. We'll, we'll, we'll go on IG live. Ooh, we go on IG Live because everybody got to see this. Hey, I, we, I need we, this on the record. I, I, want, I don't ever want to get that question again. Hey, I talk, hey. talk your exposure Instagram Live. I like it. We definitely go hey, get that done. Steven, I need this part of the thing <laughs> uh, cropped, cropped out, just this little section. I'm putting, on, I, I'm putting on the poll. You know how I like to do it. But, um, you know, Chris, let's go to 2014. You know, your final season, you win a national championship with Montverd. You know, run yeah. us through the team's locker room, and you know, how you guys felt after the game. Oh, after we won the championship? Man, yeah. it's funny because uh, <laughs> that year we lost to Curie. Um, that was our one loss. And after that happened, we were worried we wouldn't be able to be the national champions because okay. Matter Day didn't play in the national championship tournament and they have been undefeated. Um, and uh, we played – Cliff Alexander went to carry that year. And dude was a okay. beast, dunked everything, put a couple on me. I'm definitely in his high school highlight reel. Oh, no. But uh, So that was a tough oh, one, no. I remember. 
I remember a few months later, we found out that that loss got disqualified, got taken away because they weren't eligible because of some stuff that had gone on over there. Oh. So going into a tournament, it was like this chance to like win back our number one ranking, right? So, you know, and for me, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave home and go to the States. So like going to Florida was like a really big deal. And I, I very much viewed it as a business trip mm -hmm. of like going there, get better, win this championship, go to university get ready for school. So, you know, my family came down to watch a championship game. We were playing at Madison Square Garden, last high school game. You know, I worked for this moment, had a few big blocks down the stretch, had a little and one, I think with like two minutes left. I had just turned the ball over for a dunk, like the possession before. So it's like, I needed, I needed this one to go down. So yeah, I mean, we were just, we were so happy because everything we had been through that season in terms of, you know, we had lost a few players on our team through the year. Um, D'Angelo, I hurt his knee earlier in the season. Um, you know, the loss of Curie and then, you know, that loss being wiped away. We had grown together as a family also because we all lived in the same dorm on campus. So just getting to that moment, Madison Square Garden, all lights on us, pulling out that win, that was, was crazy. That was crazy. That's how, that's that's how they're, how they're that's, feeling like heroes. So, yeah. That's how they're a crazy moment. And, every, and, 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 and during the entire story, I saw you, like I said for earlier, I saw you smiling the whole time. So reminiscing on, on yeah, good times, on good times. Good times, good times, good times you, sure. you commit to Harvard, other than the academics, what intrigued you to go there? Man, I just really believed in, one, they, they had had a few good seasons in terms of making it to March Madness for the, you know, the few years prior. Mm -hmm. And then the second was, um, I just really believed in Coach Amaker. Um, and like, I went on my visit, we met up in his, he has like this little glass room overlooking the court. So you play, we play pickup, play pickup with the team. Everybody was really good. I was like, wow, this is a really good team. And then went up to the room and we just talked about, you know, him being recruited by Coach K when Coach K was first starting out at Duke because Coach wow. was one of Coach K's first big recruits. He's talking about how, you know, Coach K came to him and was like, I want to build something here. And I want you to be a part of it. And he's like, you know, I want to build something here at Harvard and I want you to be a part of it. And just, you know, hearing his story, seeing what he stood for, seeing how he treated the players, I knew that, like, regardless of what happened on the court, regardless of what happened in the classroom, like, I could trust my, my experience in college to him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to this day, you know, if I need anything, I, I text him, I call him. You know, he, I remember my father passed away. Um, we had the viewing. And I remember he moved, like, he moved practice. You know, I'd, I'd been out of school, but he moved the team's practice to, like, 7 a.m. so he could fly up to Toronto to come oh, wow. see my, come to my father's viewing. So just, like, that's, that's like, you know, a father figure to me for the rest of my life. Um, wow. And I think he was a big part of why I, commit, I ended up committing to Harvard. Beyond just academics, they had a really good team. And then I think he was the cherry on top where I felt like no matter what, I could trust him. And that's the biggest thing, too. And, and honestly, I've, I've heard so many stories from, you know, just kids that I've coached or kids that I've trained or even my own personal experience as well and some of my friends as well. A lot of them don't like their coach. And when they don't like their coach, they, you know, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to really develop any type of confidence when you get on the court, any type of confidence in general as a man and grow as a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so to be able to hear that you were able to have a good relationship with, with your coach and your coach did all that for you as well, bro, like you're, you're one of the lucky ones, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. there's a lot of people that don't have that. Yeah. So. No, no. I yeah. And I, for me, that was the biggest part, right? Making the decision. Cause like, you know, jump shots will go in, jump shots won't go in. But like at the end of the day, I, I don't want to have a coach that, you know, he's like basically in charge of my four years and, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I, I end up hating the dude, right? So, like, For I sure. knew that, like, that would never happen regardless of what happened. So, yeah, that's that's why I picked it. For sure. What was your first NCAA I made a moment? Woo. Oh, man. You know what? Uh, oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the right one. I mean, honestly, I think my... Uh, there's there's two. Uh, one was my first practice, like my first official practice of my freshman year. Uh, we do this drill, like a fast break drill, where people come back two on one, and you know they throw me in there, and I'm like, you know, playing the one. And Devontae knows a gun well. Yeah. He's a high yeah. flyer, so he goes up 
you about to dunk on me, and I blocked it. I was like, oh, okay, like I can hoop with these guys. Yeah, so that was like one for me, and then uh, the one where I was like, wow, this is really college basketball, um, and I'm playing in it. I would say we played uh, my freshman year. We, we we went to March Madness, and you know I didn't really play much my freshman year, but we walked out the hotel and there's like a marching band playing us from like the hotel to the bus. I was like, okay, this is college basketball. That's I can it. get used to this. So those were, I'd say those are two of my moments. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. What was your most memorable and also forget uh, forgetful moment while you're in university? My most memorable moment and my most forget, like my most, the worst, like the worst moment, the one I want to forget. Yeah. Um, definitely, I would say my most memorable, the two most memorable would be winning a championship, IV championship my freshman year, which we won on this buzzer beater by uh, the captain, Steve Mondi Missy that year against Yale. He hit like a buzzer beater from the top of the key. And I thought our season, it was, that was a roller coaster because we, we had, been first place all season. Mm -hmm. Then we played our worst game of the year, year against, uh, I think it was Yale at home. And so, you know, they were in because they had control of their own destiny. Then they're playing Dartmouth, which was like not in the top tier of the league for their last game of the season. They lose on like a buzzer beater layup with like 0.1 seconds left mm -hmm. after like someone, they threw a full court pass and if they had just let the ball go out of bounds, the game would have been done. But someone touched it so that they got the ball underneath the hoop. So that was crazy. And then, so then that set us up for, you know, a play-in. So winner takes all. Winner takes a chip and goes to March Madness. And, you know, they're winning most of the game. Then we kind of come back at the end. And then dude hits the, hits the buzzer beater. Everybody storms the court after. So that was a big moment. And in my senior year, uh, we clinched the, 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 the championship kind of on senior night. And I remember at the end of the game, just having the ball. I threw up in the crowd. <laughs> and they may storm the court at the end of the game. It wasn't that close to a game, but uh, that was just a special moment. When we had holding up the trophy was really special, um, being captain. And then uh, I would say most forgettable moment throughout college. Um, whew. I would say... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. There are some L's. There are some L's, both on and off the court. I would say uh, on the court, on the court, uh, I kind of got cooked by this one guy on B BYU in this tournament in, in Hawaii. He just kept on giving me the same, just crab dribble middle, little shoulder, little shoulder fake, hook shot. Same thing. They kept on going to him. I was like, damn, I really can't guard this. What's going on? <laughs> so I, was, uh, I was like, damn, I was, uh, I, I must have been out of it that game. And then off the court, you know, just, uh, you know, just stuff happens on campus. Nothing, nothing to talk about there. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> A broken heart. Broken heart. <laughs> yeah, we, we, all, we all been there. We all take an L every once in a while. But. Oh, man. It's funny that you imagine that, you know, to take, take an L or whatever. Because my next question for you is, it seems it seems like the, the more story, that the more that I'm hearing about your story and your stories unraveling and stuff, I'm starting to get the idea that you're a winner. What does it take to become a winner? You you, you know, you know because let let, what I mean by that as well is, is also like, you've won on every platform. You won on every platform and you've done well on every platform. And even in your life right now, you're still succeeding. And not taking many L's right now, too. So what does it take to be to, to be a winner? Yeah, I think it takes uh I think one, it takes like buying into your team, even if it's an individual thing, like the team of people around you, because your village is so important, your support system is so important. And then I would say it takes losing, honestly, right? Like I remember I remember that first St. Davis practice, and I remember literally walking outside because I couldn't breathe. And we had just done, like, a warm-up drill. Like, we weren't even working like that yet. I remember Coach saying, like, it'll be okay. And at no point did I think it wouldn't, right? And just, like, that way, unwavering confidence. And, like, even when you're losing, like, even when we lost to Curie, you know, knowing that, you know, just keep going. When we lost to Yale and, you know, we didn't have the season on, you know, we thought that we had lost our chance to win, taking care of business the next weekend, 
never know what's going to happen, right? So just like doing the work, staying confident, even when you're taking losses, because you want to be prepared for when it comes your time to act on the chance to win. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, I think, and, you know, I think believe, trust in the process. Mm -hmm. So take me through a hypothetical situation. You're on a three on two. You have Devontae on your left. You have, let's say you have Vlad on your right. You know that Vlad's a quote unquote knockdown shooter. Mm -hmm. You know Devontae, you know, you, you know Devontae is athletic. You know, he, 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 he's, he's a shooter. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the two defenders, one guy is 6'5", one guy is 6'3". Are you, mm -hmm. letting De are you letting Devontae run the lane to throw you a lob, or are you going to run the lane and take it yourself? <laughs> I'll give it to Devontae. I'll give it yes, to Devontae. Listen. To, yeah, that used to be the connection. That, 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 that's like a real situation. We used to, that was our thing. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, I give it up. I would like to say, it's fair enough to say that we use a little Ben. We use a little... Um, Joel and Bead. I think, uh, yeah, Chris said it best. Like, uh, I can remember Jeez. so many games, you know, get the rebound, Chris get the rebound, outlet it to me. I'm literally not looking at the basket. I can care less. <laughs> Draw the defenders over, throw him the lob where a pass dunk. I remember yeah, one man, game, Eggy, was... I, I don't know if you remember, it was against Brampton, the two team, and uh, you got the jump ball. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I went down the lane, bounce pass, dunked it. Crazy start off the game. I swore I yeah. got a tech, but it was absolute. It was absolutely that was crazy. crazy. I remember that one. I remember that one. That was crazy. It was absolutely crazy, uh, Stephen. So, Eggy, you know, senior night comes and your your family gets to watch you successfully play your last game as a senior. Who did you play, and what was it? Was it a night to remember? Yeah, this is in college. So, senior night was uh, we played Columbia. Um, and yeah, that was, we won the Ivy League championship that year, that, that game. So I remember, uh, you know, I've been injured most of the season. I wasn't really playing that much, but, you know, suited up this one, got to start, obviously. And I think I hit a little right, little jab, right, left-hand dunk on, on the defender, start the game off right. And then, uh, I think me and my, my boy Dre hit a, hit a big three late in the game, got the dub, clinched the league championship. Held the trophy, you know, held the trophy. Everybody's going crazy, dancing in the locker room. Coach getting hyped. So, yeah, it was a special night. Um, special night. I remember I was just sitting in the, in the locker room just, like, holding the trophy to myself. Like, I'm a champ. I'm a champ. It's a great way to go out. And then, you know, we got re obviously got ready for Ivy tournament after that. So, yeah, it was a special night, man. Special night uh, of a long journey with the game of basketball. So, a lot of emotions too, you know, walking out with, you know, walking out with your parents before the game, just thinking about, you know, the whole ritual of just like getting ready for the game, jersey, you know, putting the jersey on for the last time, doing layup lines, you know, getting everybody hype up, you know. Uh, so yeah, it was cool. And it was also cool to like look around and like see the young guys on the team that you've been playing with and like have grown up with in a lot of ways and like look back at them and be like, okay, your turn now. So, yeah, it was cool in a lot of ways. You know, with that being said, Eggy, did you have any, you know, favorite teammates? So, you know, throughout your four years, you know, did you have any guys that you still communicate with today? You want to give a little special special shout out to. Is there anybody you still, like, really mm -hmm. either loved playing with or, you know, still keeping communication with today? Yeah, I obviously love the whole team. You know, me, me and uh, Andre Chaffield, you know, that's, like, my best friend for life. Like, we live together for – you know, pretty much all of college. We link up every year, you know, for our birthdays because we have the birthdays the same week, so we always do a little joint thing. So, yeah, that's my dude for life. You know, we came in the same recruiting class. You know, my whole recruiting class, Andre and then this dude, Zach Yosher, we're, we're super tight. Um, and then, you know, Big Zena was on my team, Big Z. That was, like, my role model. Taught me a lot about the world and life. So we were super close. So those are some of the guys I was probably closest to. And then, you know, some of my younger guys, kind of, you know, Christian Yuzang, Seth Towns, Robert Baker, like that whole class, uh, you know, that, that class of sophomores that came in, that was a real special class. Um, but they were sophomores my, you know, my, my, my senior year. That whole class, really special group of guys. I'm pretty close with all of them. Obviously, Six Sniper, uh, me and him were oh, real close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Corey, uh, we, we, you know, we knew each other from when we were real young. So, um, you know, his class, you know, Robbie Feinberg, Tommy McCarthy, Wisner Perez, me and Wisner, Wisner lives out of here in the city. So we link up every, 
Honestly, man, you're gonna be. I'm just gonna start listening to my whole team because we, we listen to all. Really, we were really like that tight though. Like, we just had this culture like where we were like really all family. Um, and like, I feel like you know, it, I feel like the Harvard. It was both like the combination of the Harvard experience being like very weird and like being a basketball there being very you know very interesting, um, but also just like, you know. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just different when you, like, win stuff together and you, like, you know, go through, like, crazy journeys together. Like, we went to Hawaii one year. We went to, you know, we went to Shanghai. We played a game in, uh, we played a game out in China one year. And, like, that whole experience of, like, just traveling the world with these guys is just, like, you never forget that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of special guys, but obviously my boy Dre, uh, probably, probably my closest teammate. Yeah. You, you, like, Oh, go ahead. Sorry, one, th one thing, Stevie, you know, after, you know, you do your senior night, great experience overall, your, your, your four years there, you know, did you know at that exact moment that you're done with the game of basketball? You knew after this moment. I know you touched on it a little bit just now, but did yeah. you know yeah. exactly after that you knew you were done with it? I mean, I thought I'm, I thought I might be. Honestly, at that moment, I was like, I'm, I'm leaving probably my last game or like this is like the end of this is the end of the journey. And then, you know, a little bit after, after the season ends, you know, I'm working out, I'm playing pickup. I'm like, kind of nice. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready to give this up. And, you know, I started thinking about, you know, I actually had a conversation with a few agents about playing overseas, but I already accepted the job offer. So, you know, I was, you know, it had to have been like a pretty, like just the financial ramification, but it had to have been like a pretty good offer overseas. And like I said, you know, I had been injured throughout school, so didn't really put up the numbers that I wanted to. So, it would have taken me a while to like build up to the kind of the money I would be making in my, my current job. So just kind of had to make that an adult decision to, you know, just let the game be a game for now. Obviously play men's league, you know, still love the game, play a ton of basketball. And, you know, like, you know, there, there's, there's benefits, right? You know, like when you're playing at such a high level, the game stops being a game, right? Like it becomes a job in a lot of ways. Like you still mm -hmm. have fun with it. You still love to compete, but, uh, you're not just competing just for the love of the game anymore, right? Um, whereas now when I play, you know, you just go and you just like, nobody cares what happens after this game, right? So it's just like, you, you play so free. So I, rem I do remember, you know, playing men's league and just feeling like, wow. Also, I play point guard in men's league, so <laughs> like they handle the rock a little bit more, uh, which is, you know, I need, I, I, no, I, you should put I, that I out there. My hands, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, I yeah, to that point, like, at that moment, I thought it was the end. And, you know, even, even like, in the year since, even year since school, like, every, 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 like, half, every six months, I, like, text Vlad. I'm like, yo, I'm coming back. We're going to get training. Like, yeah, let's get ready. For, let's get ready. Like, you know, let me get an agent and, you know, I'm going to go play. Because, you know, that, that itch is just always there. And you just love the game. And, you know, essentially, it was, it was like my life growing up. Like, it's what I did what I thought about in the morning, it's what I did after school, what I did during school, is what I did, you know, is what I did on the weekends. So, uh, you know, during class, I was watching Hoop Mixtapes, Quincy Miller's Hoop Mixtape, mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? So it was, it's, it's such a big part of my life. So to kind of move forward from that was, you know, obviously a lot, but. I know, I know, I know you, you brought up, um, you brought up Vlad. How many times has Vlad called you a Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no, he, he, he's too much with that, man. He, he, <laughs> I've got a mouth on him, man. man he got a mouth on uh, him. I, I, for someone who never beat me one on one, too, he talks a lot. Call him out. Call him out. <laughs> he, he talks a lot, man. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm, so, set, I'm setting I this part of the segment to him. <laughs> I'm no, setting no, this no, I said that. I stand behind that. I got you. I got you. I got you. I do want to ask you one last thing because you, you, you did you, you did talk about this as well. I want to ask you one last basketball related question. Have you ever considered coaching? Oh yeah, that's definitely definitely in the roadmap. Right now, you know, I'm just super busy with work, but uh, definitely as you know, to get more established, I, I definitely want to, even before that, I love I love the game. I love teaching also. Like, you know, if money didn't matter, I definitely, I would have loved to be a teacher. Um, and honestly, one day, hopefully when I'm older, like in retirement, I would love to teach. Um, so I would love to be a basketball guy. I love to coach, you know, like a young team. 
group of kids and like watch them watch them develop into you know young men I love that journey would love to you know be a part of that and like teach, you know share the game I love with them so that's definitely definitely something in the pipeline and definitely when I have hopefully I have some kids one day I'm definitely we, we win all the chips fair enough kindergarten fair. through grade 12 I might even become a college coach after that so we'll see Love to hear it. Love to hear it. We, yeah. Hey, Devontae, we, we heard it here first on Talk Your Exposure, man. Yeah, we heard it here first. We hey. heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you, though, you start, you you know, transition to a little bit after basketball. You start a foundation called No More Names. Uh, can you just talk, touch, touch up on that a little bit and just talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so No More Names, I started, like, right after kind of the season ended my senior year. Um and basically what happened, Stefan Clark in Sacramento had been killed in his backyard by the police. And at that time, you know, me and my roommate were, like, just talking in the dining hall. We're just, like, no more names. Because, you know, coming to college, uh, coming to Montverde, you know, Trayvon had just been killed. Coming into college, Eric Garner and Michael Brown were both killed that summer. Throughout college, just name, name after name after name. And then at this moment, it's just, like, wow, this is just too much, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, at that moment, said I wanted to do something, didn't know what that meant, but we had we held a benefit concert on campus. Um, Vic Mensa came, Dr. Harry Edward was involved, Jeremy Lin uh, con contributed, which was great. It was also great to see the work he's doing just more broadly in the voice he has. But, um, you know, tried our best to pull something together to, you know, get back to community. And then, you know, after, you know, uh, like a hellish three weeks, because we, we kind of just came out of this, came up with this idea out of nowhere. And we're like, okay, we're going to do this in three weeks. And it had been a lot harder than we thought, but um, it, it went well. And we were like, you know, we should do this at other campuses. So the next year we, we, we did events at, I think, six schools in the Ivy League, you know, either, you know, comp, concerts, speaking series, um, and the like, you know, and through that, I actually built a good relationship with Emerald Garner, Eric Garner's daughter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, oh, wow. in the last year or so, we've done, we've done events with her. It's on Tom Thomas. Um, we had a pretty special event, you know, I think it was about a year ago, maybe a year and a half now with, you know, Professor Cornell West at Harvard, uh, Al Sharpton, Eton. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, pulling together these events where people can just kind of speak. And in this past summer, um, you know, we did a lot with student athletes around kind of helping engage them and give them a voice, um, you know, in light of after George Floyd, a lot of student athletes just didn't know what to do. So kind of bringing a network together, we had like a group chat with like 2,700 student athletes from across or and former student athletes from across the country, just like kind of chopping it up. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it was great to be a part of that. So it's been special. You know, I feel like it's, I feel like I've been changed more than I've any change I've made, but I've just learned a lot and about, you know, how, about, you know, taking on these issues and trying to contribute my voice. So it's been a privilege to be a part of, and, you know, the group of people I've worked with, like one of my closest friends came through this, Gabor uh, Matur, he, he's helped me a ton, um, just in terms of organizing stuff, hustling, being scrappy to make things happen. Because we didn't have, like, we didn't really have money just kind of trying to just figure things out and try and do our best. So I've learned a ton. Um, it's been a priv privilege to like serve and I hope to continue to, you know, do what I can, even if it's not much, just do what I can. I just want to say before we get to our, our last question, before we play our game, but honestly, Chris, this is my first time meeting you and every single little bit that I've taken in from you today, bro, you are a very special man, man. Like, honestly, Thank like, you, like, like every single time, like the more you talk, the more I'm just, I'm just like, whoa, I'm, I'm in awe. Like, like I just, you. I, I, you know, say like, like you're someone I want to be, a I want to be friends with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like very inspirational, very motiva motivating, uh, very uh, ca captivating as well. You know, somebody you. that that has a has a journey, has a drive, and wants to do, and wants to give back to the, com to the community and help and be be a be a be a um, what's what I'm looking for? Be 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 someone special and, and help people you know that are in need. You know what I mean? And and to be able to be able to see that from you, man, like like. Good, kudos to you, man. If I had any little little sound effects, I would hit the, the <laughs> clap clap button or whatever. But honestly, on 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 a real note though, like, yo, that that yo, you're you're a special man, my guy. You're a special man. Thank you, thank you, man. Um, Flattering me, man. I'm about to blush. You make a black man blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A jokester too. A jokester. <laughs> <laughs> Not only a motivator, but a jokester as well. I see, I see you. I see you. Uh, last question before we get to our game. 
where can we find your organization? Is there any other website? Is there is there YouTube yeah. videos, anything like that? Yeah, we have a we have a just a profile on social. So like Instagram is where we have kind of the biggest following. Where you know we just post con content and as things come up, we we post the different events that we run. So uh, at at underscore no more names is a uh, is kind of our profile. Well, definitely, and and honestly, that that sounds like it would be you know something that that would relate to the 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 game that we like to play, and that game is called. In a perfect world, Eggy. So yeah. in a perfect world, I'm going to put you in a scenario and you're going to fill in the blanks for me. It's going to be very intriguing to see. I'm actually very intrigued to where you put yourself. Okay. So let's go me too, all actually. the way back. Me too. Let's go all the way back, Montverde. You guys won the championship, as you did, right? So, um, you know, you got every school in the country. You can't pick Harvard, though. Oh. Where else would you go? In a perfect world, where would you have gone? And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You, and you also can't pick any Ivy League school either. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I mean... Good point. Good point. What do you mean, or I could go to any school? In a perfect world. Any, any school. In a perfect world. Yeah, I would went to Duke. I really want to go to Duke. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was like a good combination of school and basketball. And, you know, Coach K is Coach K. Would have been, you know, I was a big Jabari Parker fan. Uh, so yeah, I would I would have wanted to go to Duke. I thought I would have thought, I thought that would have been fun. But uh, you know, was it Coach Emmerich is fun. Coach Emmerich also played at Duke. So, you know, ended up not being what happened for me, but I was a I was a big Duke fan. Big Duke fan. I knew I liked you, Chris. I knew I liked you. I'm dead. We got we, another we, we, Duke we, fan. We, 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 I'm a diehard Duke fan. We, we, okay. we, 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 we have to change your perspective on LeBron, but I like, but I like you. I, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Duke okay. it is. You going over there? Great class. You're doing what you got to do at Duke. Double digit score, top mm. ten every other night. Right now, in terms of the NBA, we're gonna in a perfect world here. You're on the top ten list. You know, you're in the you're in the lottery class. You know, as we know, you know, you could kind of, I don't want to say exactly pick where you're going to go in the class, but you could definitely verbally tell the media where you want to land, right? What organizations you like and what organizations you don't like. Draft day comes, Chris. In a perfect world, which team would you love to go to? Man, I always dreamed of being drafted first by the Raptors. That was like the dream. I was a little bit sick that Kawhi won the chip. Cause that that was my dream. I wanted to bring the trip to Toronto, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? So yeah, that 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 would have been where that would have been it in a perfect world. Two for two. Okay. He's two for two. He's two <laughs> for two on your side. He is two for two. Um. Okay, Chris. Also in a perfect world, you do what you got to do at the Raptors. You know, your incoming rookie that's double digit score. You're kind of leading the team now. Now you go you go to the end of your rookie contract, and you're at that status now in the league. That you can, you're going to a team, but you also could bring some free agents over with you, right? In a, oh, perfect, okay. in a perfect world. Now, you got to pick a guy, let's say, a solidified star in the league, been in the league plus five years, but you also get to pick a guy, a rookie or a sophomore. So, first two years in the league. Who are those two people you're bringing over for free agency? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. So, I need a point guard. Uh, I need a pass first point guard. I thought you were the point guard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, we in the league, you know. You know, this ain't men's league, so I, I got I got to play the Pass first point guard. So, no, I would probably try and bring – Chris Paul getting old, but if we try and win the ring, I'll bring Chris Paul as, as kind of my, my setup man. And then – Another player, I probably another young player. Gotta be first two years in the league. You know, I'm gonna flip that. I'll bring Lamelo as my point. Okay. I feel like he's passed first. He's got something to his game. And then, and then, you know, I'll probably bring a wing. You know, established player on the wing that I think would fit well with me. So I feel like someone who I like to play with. Uh, I feel like. I like to play with KD. I feel like just like everything he brings to the game in terms of just like he can fit into any system with like his ability to shoot, his length on defense. So like, I feel like those two and me, 
you know, from playing well, I think we can we, 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 we win something. That's a second LaMelo uh, and KD combination that we've had on the oh, show, really? Monte. Yeah. Is it okay. this, that combination? Eddie Robinson. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to lock in with a LaMelo on my side. I don't know if I'll do KD, but, you know, I'm not the one getting Who would you asked. pick? Who would you pick? You going to pick LeBron. Me, no. Me, no. See, I'm a, I'm a firepower guy. You know, we going hard or we going home. So I'm, I'm going to pick LaMelo first two first mm-hmm. two people in the league. But for my solidified guy in the league, I'm probably going to pick a, you know, I think future in a firepower as well. So I'm going to pick another wing, you know. I like to shoot the ball, of course, but I also like to pass the ball as well as Chris and O. So I'm probably going to pick a Devin Booker or a, a Bradley B or a Jason Tatum. That's me. That's my style of play. I'd rather, you know, have those those three point guard, shooting guard, small forward, firepower. That's me. I want to add to that question. Sorry, I want to add to that question. So, so it's you, it's, it's LaMelo, it's KD. Add two Hall of Famers. Hmm. Okay, so Lamel running the one, KD running, let's say the three, Shaq at the five. You get, Shaq is just different. Like no one's Shaq at his peak, no one's stopping that. Correct. And then at the two, Kobe. That's my guy. Over Jordan? Okay. Kobe's my guy. Jordan's Jordan, but Kobe's my guy. Okay. Like I, I was I was number 24. Uh, that was my guy. Like I, I used to like stay up late to watch the Lakers games. Kobe's my favorite player growing up. Wow. Fair enough. That is not a bad lineup at all. All That's right, Chris. That lineup. that ends the perfect world. But you know, in the NBA, who are you watching right now? You know, who are you excited to see play in day in day out? Yeah, I mean, Ant Edwards. I like his game. Lamelo, young guy, I like his game too. Um, I like Book's game. I think he. I think he's fun fun to watch. I like the, when the Sixers are playing. I like to watch them. Obviously, Ben, same. You know, a lot of the guys I play with, I like to keep up with them. It's so like Ben on the Sixers, D on, on Timberwolves, you know, Drew, uh, Jamal. Jamal Jamal is different. Jamal during the playoffs was – I, I, that was crazy. First ever, can, wow. first ever Canadian to get 50 points without a free throw. Free throw. Yeah, no, he, he, he's got a flamethrower on him when, he, when, he, when he's going. And then uh, – you know, I also like to keep up with James Harden. I just – James Harden, you know, when he was on the Rockets. I know people, some people don't like to watch him play, but he's just so skilled, man. Like, you you are not stopping him from scoring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, those, those are some of the guys I like to watch play. For sure. And final question that we like to ask to conclude the show. Who would you like to see on Talk Your Exposure? But here's the kicker, though. You have to help us get them on the show. Oh, wow. He's on the spot. <laughs> you know what? I'm trying to think. Steven, we really got to get a button for that. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's a big question. That's a big question. I mean, yeah, I mean, y'all should talk with a. Uh... With uh, with uh, with with CJ with Corey, have you guys spoke to Corey? He's Corey out there. Yeah, Corey Johnson. Corey Johnson. Corey, Corey Johnson. Johnson. In the BBL, he's, he's been hooping. He's been doing his thing. We play at Harvard together. That'd be a good person to talk to. Someone I didn't go to Harvard with. I mean, um, you know, my boy, uh, you know, Jordan Caroline. He he was really good. He you know at Nevada, he did his thing. He was like you know pretty much like all American level player at Nevada. Now he's, you know, he was, he, he's kind of uh, trying to make it to the league now, he's playing overseas. So now that, that was, that, that's my guy. He's good. And then uh, my boy, uh, uh, John Mark Kumaje, Big Chris, uh, we went to Montverde together. He's like seven three, seven four. Damn. One of the funniest dudes I know. He won D G He's League hilarious. <laughs> he, he won the G League Defensive Player of the Year last year. Um, oh, wow. He's doing his thing in Europe now, so. Um, he, he's got a real interesting story in terms of just like how he came from, you know, from Africa, uh, to the U S and then, you know, didn't really even speak that much English when he first came to the campus. And then, uh, definitely wasn't, you know, had a long way to go basketball wise. I just started playing the game and now to see where he, where he's at now, I think, you know, that'd be an interesting story. So, you know, I'll get, I'll get the work. I'll start working. I'll start working the phone lines. 
Appreciate that. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. Where can we find you on social media? Yeah, you can follow me, Chris Eggy24, and on uh, on IG, and then on Twitter, uh, Chris Eggy15. Chris Eggy15? Yeah. Yeah. Chris Eggy15. That's my number. Hey, Chris, honestly, man, it was a pleasure to talk to you. It was a very, very, very funny story. I had a lot of fun with, with this one today. Man, nothing nothing but the best to you. You know, all the best. I know you and Devante have a connection, so, so I would love to see that on the court. And be best believe... We're going to get that one-on-one -on -one going on. We're going to get okay. that one-on-one -on -one sure. going on. Okay. I'm sure. expecting it. <laughs> so sure. one, more time. Sure. one more time, stay safe, stay healthy, and we wish you Thank nothing you. but the best, man. All right. Appreciate it.